Uh, let's start this episode off by saying hi to Tim Lohman of Low Volts. I'm going to give you a link below. Not only does he play awesome slide guitar, um, awesome parent, by the way. Ask me, I know. My kids turn out really well better than me. So take that for what it's worth. But Tim did my logo. He's a graphic artist, amongst other things. Anyway, I'm going to give you a link to his site below. And he's got all kinds of cool t-shirts and stuff and music so patronize him won't you anyway the last time tim's got some great arch tops that he plays ones that i covet all the time you remember last time where we did all this overpass structure and chick flick teal work and and, and body work and no that was the episode before the one before the one before but anyway we took a guitar that had had the finish taken off of it and we did this to it now there's a lot more to do to this body we're going to run the electrics in it we're going to make it a left-handed guitar tam's going to take it to school and play it there but we've got a lot to do to wrap this up when we do I'm sure you will be there but right now this thing is like the headless horseman we are missing a neck so this episode is about don't look too close because I've done a lot of the work here but it's about this neck this is the neck for this guitar and it is pitiful it's the amongst next to the Galliano junk pile amongst the worst necks I have ever worked on. I mean, I've worked on, do you remember uh, Rob's junk pile? It was an old uh, Ibanez jamboree that I decided I was going to put a tailpiece on uh, and and I put an extra <laughs> fretboard on it and a, and a map of, oh, Canada, my home and native land. Yeah, should I give you something up there because people say I never work on flat tops well that's changed I mean, anyway you'll learn that in a little bit anyway this knack yeah I've done some stuff with it already I already know the nightmarish hell that is this knack so without further ado throw on some Tim Lohman do you really want to listen to what I'm saying or can you just watch it and go yeah that is miserable miserable and then at the end Believe it or not, you're going to go, you did it, dude, dude, you really, really did it. Let's hit the bench. It's ridiculous. Okay, guys, we got a little bit of time here to waste because we've put a coat of something special on top of this fake tobacco sunburst. I don't know if it's fake or not, but it looks okay. Uh, but I wanted to put something on here that's going to seal this up. Because we're actually going to French polish this thing very deeply. It's going to look old. And I'm going to put so many hours into this that it's criminal that I'll never get my money back. Now, we're going to have to have the neck match the body in some way in the theme. Now, I called it pumpkin because it was fluted. The body was fluted. There's a couple other things going on here. Um... This has steel reinforced neck, which means there's a rod in here, some metal rod, but it's not a truss rod. It's not adjustable. Now, I want you to see, this is that car go by. I want you to see right here, look closely. There is a line that runs here. Is that a scratch? No, it's the start of a crack. You don't want that. Notice the knot is still on. Notice that we've talked about the fingernail mark. Somebody needs to know what a nail clippers is. Um, uh, tuners are on here. They look good. We're going to pull these off. I don't have the escutcheons for this thing here. So we're just going to put some good tuners on this thing. Um, I want you to notice that this is patched together here. Uh, it looks like they just glued a bunch of stuff together. Those are all things that can crack later. Um, there's some kind of something or other there. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to take and stain this part, that orangey color, and the back of it orangey to come down into here. And then we'll blend in that sunburst. 
um, that's on the body. Notice that there are no fret markers here. And notice that we took off or out a few frets. Now, I'm not going to try to put those back in, so I'm just going to pull the frets off of this thing and refret it. We'll talk about that in a minute. But before we start doing any of that, We've got these holes here that was a nightmare to steam off this neck, even though the whole thing was dried out. So, what we want to do here is, and I've gotten ahead of this a little bit, um, we just want to take some doweling, like so, eighth inch doweling, and we're going to take an eighth inch bit, and we're going to very carefully make this hole a little bit bigger. like so, and the doweling will fit in here. So we're gonna glue this doweling in here. I am gonna use tight bond this time. I don't want this coming out. I don't wanna have to heat it up later. There's no reason to take these out. And you certainly don't want these cutting loose. So a couple tools we're gonna need here. Um, this is very handy. I, I, it took me a while to find this. But this is basically a fret size saw. It's well put together. Somebody thinks about insetting these. You could put drop a Loctite on there if you want, but a great tool. But what this is, is you simply put it down in a slot that might have been gummed up or has something going on from fret removal, and you just pull it through like that. See, it's hanging up right there where I drilled. You don't want to go too deep or get all crazy and sideload it, but this is a good thing. They also have these kind of tools that scrape stuff, garbage, out of a fret. This one's pretty tight, which is still okay. But you got anything that's hanging up right, especially on the top where you've pulled the fret out, you want to get rid of that because these chips I want to remember the stuff that's pulling up where the tangs um, were hanging on on the surface that might look okay but when you start looking with a magnifying glass you'll see that the grain on this runs this way so when you've pulled something out there's little I would call it micro delamination <laughs> isn't that a good word that can chip off later and then you, you really want this smooth and clean so couple of things you can take a razor blade single edge razor blade put tape on it this is a great luthier tool um, the tape stops it from digging in everywhere and only the things that are sticking up above everything else are going to get hit by that blade so you can take this blade and you can come across here like so um, you can take a hand plane I love this little finger plane. It it adjusts down to virtually nothing. And, it, and you've got something here to push on. So especially where you've done drilling work, you can take this kind of stuff. And then, of course, if you're going to pull frets, you want a fret puller. We've talked about this. They come with shims. So when this starts, after you've heated up the fretboard, once it starts to come up, you squeeze this, the squeezing action actually acts as a lever to pull the fret up. And when you get one loose down the way, then you put this underneath and it gives you a little bit of um, shim underneath it. That comes with two, and these are measured in thousandths of an inch. But we're going to pull the frets off of here, and then we're going to have to put new frets on. Um, we're going to have to cut them ourselves, fret wire, and we're going to cut it to a radius. So you, one of these little setup toolkits where you're kind of pulling up under the strings where it shows you where the radius is. These also come in handy for doing just basic determinations of how much you're going to bend your fret wire and all of that. So you find the one that fits everything. Uh, there we go. I think we're going to be around 10 or 12, and you just lay it on there. Watch and make sure your fret markers are not sticking up. Sometimes they'll swell. 
but you want to make sure there's no daylight underneath there. So that's how you kind of do things. I am going to start by pulling the um, the old uh, tuning machines off. Notice that they are a flat uh, a head screw. Um, no Phillips stuff here. Somebody's going to want these. I'm going to put these away. Um, something has been uh, taken out here for some reason or another. Once I get these out, I'm going to fill those with, you know it, bacon-flavored toothpicks, right? And snap them off and glue them in and then refinish that. So once um, it kind of just looks like this, you snap the end off put some glue on, stick it in there, snap that off, and then file all those things down. So it gives you good wood, new wood to screw into. And then finally, this is going to go away. Yeah, I know it's beautiful or whatever, but I'm going to put a piece of metal on here. It's going to serve two purposes for us. I'm going to jam some glue down in here after I try to flex all these things that might look cracked or whatever. And then I'm going to cut something out of a piece of metal. It kind of looks like a lamination. This is an old, made-to-look-a-vintage sign. And if you notice, there's a pumpkin right there. And I can lay this on here and cut that out. I'm going to see what I can do with that cat. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, in the future. But I can turn this a little bit, and that pumpkin will be up on top here, and it'll shine through the tuners and everything. But... Let me give you little glimpses as I go, but that's what I'm doing. Okay, do not forget, somebody's going to want all these old parts. So put the screws on a piece of tape like that. And then you're going to take all of this. And you're going to want to put it in a bag. And then you're going to take a magic marker. And... You're going to write on the bag what these go to. And then you're going to put them in that canvas bag that has all the parts that's hanging. Yeah, that's right, right here on the workstation. That's what you want to do. Because you'll see people popping up and they... There's nothing like somebody that's getting one of these for... You know one of their first projects and it's in its carcass and everybody stripped it down okay this is interesting there's kind of rivet things holding these on that are mushroomed out and those are sitting down in there so this has not had another set of tuners on it these are the original ones you want to remember if you're going to put different tuners on here you don't want to take a drill to this and crack everything out. You're going to want to take a reamer and work it very, very carefully. Which is just like this. You go in here and you turn it and you work it very carefully until the tuners you want to put on are okay. And again, we're going to get the glue out. You take our bacon flavored toothpicks. Just pop the very end off, put glue in there, push that down, snap that off. All right, glue's off of there. Violin maker's knife works great here. And then after that gets dried, we can take any number of our different gadgets that we had. The razor blade, this is a really cool little saw here. It's nice to mask these things off if you're working on somebody's Gibson or something, but you know what, I own this guitar so I can screw it up. Before I move on, we're gonna get all these screws and these tuning machines in that canvas bag. I keep telling you about that canvas bag that I got hanging on here. Any tools, uh, 
or parts that I take off or that I'm going to put on supplies, I'm going to have those there. Um, it's getting pretty messy here, but that's what happens if you do this for real. So now we have taken these spots that we drilled in to get the neck steamed off and we are going to make sure that there's glue in there like so and you also want to remember that in some of these spots the doweling is going to come off the bottom out the bottom it's going to have to be cut off there are also other ones that went in a little sideways like so and so we're just going to dip that in there and drive that down in there and now wipe the glue off because we'll gum up our flat saw but this is a good spot for one of these don't cut your fingers don't watch how you cut your fingers with these things because they'll jump out at you and get you before before you know it you thought i spaced out right yeah no i'm can all righty okay there's the last one um it's not going to hurt anything on this junky thing to knock that down a little bit while this is a little bit loose everybody's freaking out right now but i'll tell you what you're going to see later something's going to happen with this where you won't see this anyway but you want to remember there's glue and all kinds of crud in there. Whenever there's glue, you just want to take your tool here, one of your tools, and get that glue out of there because it will come back to bite you later. We're going to have to cut across these dowels that we just put in to restore these fret slots so we don't want any glue in the way we're trying to do that later it's going to be difficult enough the way it is all right your flush cut saws if you're using them when there's glue around make sure you take your stainless steel wire brush and get everything off of there because this is the kind of stuff that makes them not so much dull but they're cutting inaccurate and you don't want that Wow, you can just see that fretboard drinking up this water. Did I ever tell you guys what the definition of relative humidity is? Yeah, well, I won't. Okay, let's test the hot plate. Ah, plenty good. Thank you, Chick Flick Teal Pointer. What's that? You're welcome? Okay. When you put the iron on, stay away from the nut, even the point of it. Maybe even turn this around like so. Leave that sit on there for about five minutes. All right, let's give it a whirl again. We got the pliers, and if necessary, we can put these shims underneath once we get an edge worked loose and get there. Uh, they come in two different thicknesses, so. Let's recharge Granny's iron. And oh, that didn't take much. All right, everything should be heated up pretty good. Yeah, there's steam coming off of there. I can smell the wood being wet. These end ones, yeah, you want to be really careful with these because sometimes the end of the fretboard will break off. So it's just patience. These came out really easy. Again, I think it has a lot to do with everything being dehydrated. Having the right tools is a big deal. Stick with me, we're gonna, isn't it nice when you get to the end together? 
big. I didn't even have to use the shims. There we go. I'm going to take some quadruple aught. Where is it? Let me find it. I have a really good setup over here that you can't see. I'll go over it, but I'll take some triple aught sandpaper or steel wool, quadruple aught, zero, 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 zero. Yeah, that's four. I am the math king of kindergarten, that's for sure. Once you do this, you want to remember that the fibers of this are going to come off. So you take your trusty luthier magnet you have right here and just run it up and down like so. And that will address that problem. Okay, a little trick for you. Take a piece of frat wire. We're going to have to bend this frat wire to the radius and do that kind of work. But we still have these plugs that we put in here that need to be slotted to accept frat wire. So we're going to take a piece of frat wire here and we're going to put it at the end of the slot, wherever we can get to the slot, and just work it back and forth just a little bit. And that's going to put a mark. You could also use, where is it, a piece of chick flick colored chalk and go over those like so. And then you take your piece of fret wire and you just put it the tang in the existing fret and just go back and forth a little bit and you'll be able to see exactly where you need to do some work there it is and then you take this little saw gadget this is really handy and you tilt it like so and you put it in the existing fret and you pull it up to where that plug is and then you just pull it back quick like that you're not trying to cut the fret slot deeper you're just trying to get the groove started there and once the resistance goes away it'll go to the bottom of the fret like that you see that and then you can turn it over if you need to this one the fret is here pull here pull pull and after a few of those you just glide this along and then you'll feel it there. Okay, this is one of those times where if you've determined the neck is warped or has a bow to it, um, you could decide to pull off the fingerboard, put on a new one, a thicker one. Um, you can also take a piece of adhesive sandpaper and put it on a, a flat straight edge and go along and do this kind of work. And you want to remember there's always a typically a bow right here around the 12th to 14th fret where everything comes down to the neck so don't worry about that but you're just basically going along you could use pencil or anything like that and see if there's anything wrong here but this is the time if you've got a neck that's out of bow they also make sanding calls that have the radius of the neck defined already so you can just go along like this but we're getting close to putting fret wire in this thing we've gone through and pulled out anytime you do any sanding and stuff you want to clean out those slots again don't spend a lot of time trying to make them wider so things get sloppy and then while glue is drying and stuff take the opportunity you have to get a little moisture on there whenever you can on the stuff that's dried out over time. Be cognizant of how water is going to mess with the finish you want. My guitars, there's my brush. I use a Neanderthal Cro-Magnum Quest for Fire. Have you ever seen that movie and heard what they said in it? Well, they got most of that script and narrative from me there you go okay guys sorry if this is a repeat but let's catch up remember we have this 
tobacco sunburst fakeosity going on that we need to match onto this neck. I'm going to put part of that color up here, part here, the rest here. Now, we also need to reset the neck. So we're going to pull a little bit over a millimeter right here. So we're going to mark that. And then we're going to make that spot match up and draw a line between here and there. And take about that much off. Which will give our neck on the guitar a pitch down like this. Which raises the bridge up. We've talked about what we're going to do with the tuners and stuff. But it's time to get the finish on but before we do that we need to refret this neck now as you know we patched up the holes that we drilled here can you see this yeah maybe we need to move this head a little bit there's some holes where we plugged and since the wood is different and since we hydrated all this stuff it dries out at a different rate so kind of remember that when you're doing this stuff you can take once everything dries out, you can take a razor, taped off, go back and forth, and then we use this fancy fret saw we got. You need one of these and go into the slots where we've done the plugs and make sure that that works. And then we um, take a, a, why am I bumbling and stumbling? We take a radius guide, figure out where the neck is and then we need to bend our front fret wire you, you've seen this before hopefully um, you stick fret wire in there and you can bend it to match that radius if you don't do this and do it at the right radius what ends up happening is when you lay the fret wire on the fretboard to drive it in it is going to kick back at you so we're going to fret this and then we're going to beat these in by hand and then we'll run the whole thing through a fret press and I'll say hi to you then. Okay guys, catching up here. Things have not gone as planned. Um, you see that there's frets everywhere, um, except right here. You see there's a piece of something sticking out right here. So here's what happened. The, the fretboard was not taking frets really well, especially down in here. Uh, we had that old brass kind of fret material the fret slots were kind of chipping out and that kind of thing so I actually for a minute thought you know what I'm just going to pull the fret board and um, take it off and we'll just get a new fret board with no radius on it and we'll just flatten this thing out because they're not that expensive but guess what our friend tight bond which was used all over the body was apparently used on the neck too and there was no way this was coming off so short of junk in the project which would have been the second person to do that i decided well here's what we're going to do let me get this back in here so to stand up i had heated up um the frets that were left trying to get the board off that didn't work it burned um the <laughs> The, the dots that show you the fret position, I've got uh, an answer for that. But it got down into here where this fret was just completely gone. So what I did was I took a piece of fret board that I had laying around to cut off from a cigar box guitar fret board. And um, it wasn't wide enough for here. So what I did was I cut it long ways. See the frets run this way. And then worked it down. I actually took a chunk out of the fretboard down to the neck and then glued that in. And now, I, before I put any or took any wood off of it, I made a mark on the side and I know where the fret was. And so I took a straight edge and you can see right here that there's a mark there. So I'm going to cut this off right here i'm going to put a fret in i'm going to take a fret saw uh and and put a groove in here and then once that's done i'll cut this off uh grind it down a little bit but these frets are all in they look pretty good and oh i want to show you something i shouldn't show you this but guess what i will if you take a round piece of wood like this and you cut a slot in it like this, it's not too deep. 
and you get a spot where there's a fret that is trying to bow back at you or something, um, after you glue these in, you wait a while, and then you can go in with this and put it, say you got a fret that's on the side that's like this, and you just pop it a good one, or maybe you got one that's sticking up when you eyeball it. You can actually turn this over to and just pop these here and there and work them over and then once this fret is in of course we're going to take a magic marker and score these after we've been down the belt sander I do, I do the rough work on fret jobs on a belt sander just by laying it and pivoting and, and, and turning the fretboard and the frets into the bandsaw and that, that way it takes a lot of this off and it also takes care of this if you had to do some work there, but get a piece of dowling, cut it here. Don't tell anybody, it's just you and I let everybody else struggle, right? And then of course, anytime you see little clamps like this at yard sales and stuff, you wanna, you wanna get those because they come in really handy. Like when I had to bow this one down, like so, very handy. So, summary, cut this off, put a fret in, dress the frets down, um, take some naphtha to the neck, get it right, and then I will be ready to stain this part and this part only after, only after I knock everything over, I'm trying to be funny, I pull about a millimeter off of here. I'm going to um, mark about a millimeter here and then turn this over and connect that and get that edge. It doesn't take too much here to turn into a lot on the bridge when you're doing a neck reset. Once that's done, we're going to... Um, oh, I found a t little telltale thing here. You see that dot right there? That says somebody actually run a little dowel up to the new fingerboard. Maybe that's why I couldn't get it off. Anyway, it'll be fine. I'll see you in a bit. Right about now you're saying, dude, you did it. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm not overjoyed. All right, real quick here. I have this ruler. It's metric and standard. I have marked off two millimeters there, two millimeters there. Then I am going to connect those lines very clearly. We're going to take this very thin saw and now with that, this is going to be hard to do here. We just want to get that mark cut on the top, but I'm going to roll this over and put that mark right there. Let's turn this a little bit so we can see what we're up to. This workstation is very handy. Now we're going to take that straight edge and what we want to do is we want to take this part off here but because this is pitched here there's going to be a little bit of filing to do but I want to go right to that right there and then I want to go to this point here and I want to mark You see that? That angle right there. You can take some off, but you can't put it back on. You see that? There we go. And we are going to come down from that edge. right there. There's not that much to do. A lot of this is going to be done with this file. This file's really great, especially if you keep it clean. You got to keep your files clean. If you're using brass uh, stuff and and metal and wood and just about anything these things will 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 clog up 
and you don't do that. So let's get this turned back over. I want this to be nice and flat and level, and I want the work to be straight with the world here. Let's get that where it's not tilted, where it's laying nice and flat. Remember, this wood had been steamed, so I had to wait a while for it to work out or dry out because, anyway, we're going to cut right to the outside of that edge. Of course, these blades got to try and pull out any time that you're doing something critical. Once you get that main cut made right there, like so, you just stay on the line. You can see we're taking very little off, but you stay on that line, and then you just make the line disappear with this file, nice and slow. You can see, that once you make that line disappear along the whole side here, you're gonna be good to go. You can always go back and take a little bit more off but you sure can't put it on. Okay, let's take a look at the pointer. I don't know if you can see that here, but there is about a millimeter and a half sticking out of a ledge there. And I've got a little bit right there that's not doing what I needed to do. And it mysteriously lines up with that piece of wood that somebody put up here. Somebody tried to do a neck reset on this thing before, as I've told you. So I've got a nice, um, chisel here and I'm just going to go along remember we just want to work that line like so okay we get that little bit out of the way there and we just follow that line down like this keep your chisel sharp it's a good thing to keep chisel sharp hey have you seen I'm just a plethora of God knows what here have you ever seen one of these you put your chisel in it, you clamp it in here like this, and then this rolls on your stone and it gets the angle just right. Have you ever seen one of these? Well, pretend you haven't, and can you continue to struggle? Well, I get results, and then you can say, dude, you did it. Is this getting tired yet? Of course not, it's not. But anyway, I can just look down here, and I can see where the file has been there we go and you thought neck resets are terrible well they are remember this file doesn't have any teeth on the sides so it's not working this edge right here and that's where that chisel will come in just right look there is a lot of wood right there see it <laughs> All right, we're making headway now. The idea here is we're trying to match the sunburst. Remember this? Yeah, so we're going to use the same stains on the neck. And the idea is where the heel of the guitar comes into the body, we're going to be using this layers and layers of eucalyptus Kino. And this is going to take a while to turn this wood orangey like we want it, but you get the idea. Then once we get this where we can flare this collar out down into the neck about here, between here and here, then you'll see the oak gall ink, the black, come into it. We're going to put something over the, the headstock, but when you're applying stain like this, especially spirit stain, when the rag starts grabbing on, you want to move on. And then you can come back later once everything dries out. You can put about three coats of this on a day, but I'll keep putting it on when it's starting to get sticky on you because you'll end up with a lot of messed up finish. But the thing is, we'll end up with a point and a point here. All right, I like this angle to catch you up and show you what we've done. Uh, first off, I want you to notice that 
as you saw, Tammy has signed it, and we've got the black um, uh, part of the sunburst on. This is like the sorriest sunburst you've ever seen. Now, I want you to notice that there's a couple little divots in there, which means somebody was using a capo on this neck, which, I have to hide this, you're not ready for this, which accounts for all the finger work and stuff. Now, I've got a couple decisions to make here. I'm going to leave that like that. I like that. It looks as messed up as it is. And um, I don't think anybody's going to be fretting right there. Um, I don't see any concert uh, guitarist or I don't say see Hale Fe Felice Navidad, Jose Feliciano or whatever his name doing the Christmas album with this guitar. So we're going to leave that there. We actually had a couple of the fret markers literally burn out. So I don't know. I may put some orange ones in there or just use some epoxy that's kind of hazy clear. But would you look at this? Ooh, ah. Uh, that is, I think, you know what this is. This is pumpkin. And so I think this is a clean one owner. And I think this is a time where I'm going to go comb my head and um, close this episode out because it's fixing to get serious now. Pumpkin's fixing to come to life. Okay, guys, don't say that I didn't warn you. This path has no exit when we started. What was it? I lost track. I think I said this was episode number seven. 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 When actually it was number yeah, six. But all that work on the neck. So we got a clamp on the neck. Notice the back is still not on. We got a clamp on the neck. And we're going to go into the next episode now, and we're going to do all kinds of stuff like put the neck back on, make sure it's stable, pickups, electronics. There's all kinds of finishing work to do. You're not going to believe what this is going to look like when it is done. And we're getting ever closer to that. I'm going to bunch up a lot of stuff in the next episode, stuff that you've seen before. But anytime I have an opportunity to show you a neck coming off a guitar, or how to put one back on, I'm going to pay attention to the details because that's where you make it or break it on these things. Again, the takeaway on these guitars is if you're going to pick them up and you're going to get them cheap, know what you're getting into because there's a lot, a lot of hours into this. And um, I think you're starting to figure out that the structural stuff is what will make or break the instrument in terms of its saleability and usefulness in the long term. And that takes building a reputation. I've been at this, um, it seems like my channel's been up for about five years. When I started, I was doing um, cigar boxes and then moving into uh, coffee cans and license place and then somewhere about three years into it I got into uh, an arch top on an old um, airline that was in pretty good shape I still haven't had to reset the neck on that one anyway I'm getting way out in the weeds let's close this out and get ready to do some rewarding work in terms of something that will look like something and sound like something in the next episode Thanks for watching. Give me a like if you haven't, and subscribe if you have not. I would really, really like to be making 35 cents off of every episode that I film, and you can help me out, brother.